Welcome back to the channel, my Young and the Restless fans. And yes, it's time to dish on the delicious drama from the Monday, December 2nd episode. Yeah, buckle up because Genoa City is serving high drama, family feuds, and a maple bacon scone showdown. You know what? I'm going to give you a few highlights and then we'll dive deep into this episode. First, we see Nikki and Victor can't believe that Diane and Jack are back together. We got a little bit of a complicated love situation with Kyle and Claire. And then when it comes to Sharon versus Phyllis, yeah, we got a showdown. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this episode. So let's kick things off with society shenanigans. We got Jack and Diane strolling in the society like they own the place, blissfully in love and oblivious to the chaos that they are about to unleash. They spot Victor brooding inside and decide to brighten his day because why just walk past your ex-rival when you can stir the pot? As Jack and Diane join Victor and Nikki, the verbal sparring begins. Nikki is appalled, demanding to know if the Jack and Diane reunion is real. Now, Jack confirms because nothing bonds people like mutual scheming and a family intervention going wrong. Now, Victor throws some shade, claiming that failure runs through the Abbott bloodline. Ouch. And Diane claps back calling him a backstabber. Classic Y&R Venom, folks. Now, meanwhile, Nikki is given a major side eye so sharp it could cut diamonds, and Jack is reassuring Diane that Kyle will come around. Optimistic, considering Kyle's got trust issues bigger than the Newman Enterprises. However, there was another revelation that all of those companies that Jack decided to buy up at pennies for the dollar were the same ones that Victor sold to make Glissade a shell of a company. So Glissade is now made whole under Diane's leadership. Speaking of Nikki, let's head over to her new office over at Chancellor, and Nikki is settling into Catherine's stumping grounds. Esther pops in to gush about Nikki's leadership because, of course, Esther is the office hype woman we all need. And then Victor swoops in to admire Nikki's new digs and plays proud husband, snapping photos of her at the big desk. And she even is garnering a picture of Catherine as part of her reason for running the company. It's a cute in a power couple meets Instagram husband kind of way, I guess. But you know, Victor, behind every compliment, there's always a chess move. So now we got Kyle and Claire at the park, lost in thought about his parents' dramatic confession. Now, Claire, who snaps him out of this existential funk, she reminds Kyle that his mom might be manipulative, but hey, she's manipulative out of love. Now, Kyle is torn between wanting to move forward and his lingering trust issues. Claire suggested, you know what, just chill and focus on the people who care about you. Subtle self-promotion, I guess. Now, they share a kiss, but before things can heat up, they're over at the Abbott Mansion and Jack and Diane interrupt. Timing, guys, timing. Now, in this private conversation that Diane have with Kyle pleading her case, admitting that her plan to save him from Victor was unconventional, wildly manipulative, but Kyle called Calls her out for the emotional gymnastics, but ultimately he decided to let bygones be bygones. And I guess this is where we cue the warm family hugs, at least for now. Now let's swing over to Crimson Light. Summer is doing her best to keep Phyllis in check with a maple bacon scone, bless her optimism, but all it takes is Sharon walking through that door to unleash Phyllis's inner tornado. Phyllis lights up Sharon, accusing her of ruining lives, playing the victim, and generally being the root of all evil in General City. Sharon tried to keep her cool, but Phyllis is on a tear, throwing accusations like it's confetti. And the fact that Sharon is playing it very, very cool is definitely something that both Summer and Phyllis especially did not expect. And she was like, well, if you think that you uh, are guilty, why need a defense? Turn yourself in. 
However, as much as she kept pushing her to, you know, turn herself in, Michael swoops in to break up the drama, defending Sharon and reminding Phyllis that even guilty people need lawyers. Phyllis is unimpressed and storms off, muttering about Sharon's mysterious motives. And finally, meanwhile, Sharon is ready to take responsibility for all her mistakes. Yes, all of them. And pleads with Michael to help her plead guilty. Michael, ever the loyal friend, try to talk her out of it. But Sharon seems ready to pay the ultimate price for her sins, leaving us all wondering, is this redemption or resignation? Okay, so there you have it. This episode had it all. Bickering billionaires, mother and son drama, and Phyllis throwing verbal haymakers like a pro. Will Diane and Jack's reunion survive the wrath of Victor? Can Kyle truly forgive his parents? And is Sharon guilty plea a noble move or the start of another war between her and Phyllis? So yeah, until next time, YNR fans, stay dramatic and always bring the popcorn. <laughs>